assalamu alaikum my dear followers and uh, subscribers in this video i am going to show the difference between augmented dickey fuller test phillips perron test and uh, kpss unit root test uh, using eviews uh, there are a large number of uh, unit root tests and uh, some people are confused whether their results are the same or uh, different so in this video uh, i am going to show uh, what is the similarity uh, among those tests and what is the difference among the various uh, unit root tests and i am using eviews software so let me start with my uh, presentation and uh, here i am showing you a graph of consumer price index at a glance and uh, if you look at this graph uh, this is uh, this series shows an upward trend uh, so there is an increasing trend in this model you see that uh, consumer price index is increasing over time so this means that uh, this time series uh, has a unit root that is it is not stationary since th this data is at level so uh, as i mentioned in my previous videos that uh, time series at level are usually non stationary uh, but they can be made stationary um, by different ways and one of the ways is to take the first difference so first i will compare the results of the uh, dickey uh, augmented dickey fuller test phillips perron test and kpss test using uh, consumer price index series at uh, level and then uh, i'll show how to make it uh, uh, stationary now in this slide uh, we have three different small windows in this window in this window uh, i have checked stationarity of cpi and the, the null hypothesis for uh, augmented dickey fuller test is that uh, the CPI series has a unit root and after conducting this test here is the T statistics and here is the p value now since the null hypothesis is that uh, CPI has a unit root and the p value is uh, 1 which is very high so we fail to reject this null hypothesis and our conclusion is that the consumer price index time series has a unit root that is it is non stationary at uh, level and i now will uh, show you the results of uh, the phillips perron unit root test on cpi and again the null hypothesis is that uh, consumer price index time series has a unit root that is it is non stationary and here are the uh, test results this is the adjusted t state its value is 3.19 and its p value is again 1 so based on this p value uh, we fail to reject this null hypothesis and our conclusion is that uh, uh, the consumer price index has a unit root that is it is non stationary at level uh, this is test number 3 and this is kpss unit root test on cpi i'm using the same series that i used in case of augmented dickey fuller test and uh, in case of phillips perron uh, unit root test now the only difference between the kpss and the pp and the augmented dickey fuller test is that in case of the previous two tests that is adf and the phillips perron the null hypothesis is that uh, the series the time series has a unit root but if you look at this uh, in case of KPSS unit root test, the null hypothesis is uh, the opposite. That is, uh, the null hypothesis here under KPSS unit root is that CPI is stationary. That is, it doesn't have a unit root. So, here are the results of the LM state. And uh, the LM state value is 292 and here are the asymptotic critical values for 1% table which is 0 0.739 for 5% table it is 0 0.46 and for 10% level it is 0 0.35 so here we have to compare 
the LM state value with these critical values and if the LM state value is greater than the critical values at 1%, 5% and 10%, uh, then we uh, reject the null hypothesis and our conclusion is that the CPI series is non-stationary that is it has a unit root. So, if we compare these three results, the results are uniform in all the three cases our conclusion is that the CPI series uh, has, an, uh, has a unit root that is it is non-stationary at level. However, in ADF and Phillips Peron, we have the hypothesis, the null hypothesis that the CPI has a unit root while in KPSS test the null hypothesis is that uh, CPI is stationary but uh, the overall results of the three tests are exactly the same. So now I show you the ADF, Phillips Peron and KPSS unit root test at the first difference and if you look at these uh, results uh, now when we take the first difference in case of ADF we reject null hypothesis and we now conclude that the CPI uh, doesn't have a unit root when we take the first difference. Uh, similarly at the Phillips Peron test uh, at first difference the Null, the null hypothesis of a unit root test is uh, rejected and these are the results of the uh, KPSS unit root test at uh, the first difference. Now I will also show you the graph of uh, the delta CPI that is uh, CPI at first difference. So if you look at this graph, this, gra uh, this graph uh, is a uh, fluctuating or wandering about a zero mean. So it moves ups and down, uh, it fluctuates um, by um, among this uh, zero mean over time. So this is stationary. So it means that when we take uh, CPI series at the first difference, it becomes stationary and uh, it is uh, evident from this graph. But if you compare this, with the level at this graph, uh, this series at level is non-stationary and you can uh, you can look at this uh, graph. Uh, it has a positive trend. It does not fluctuate uh, along uh, zero mean because there is a positive or upward trend, upward trend in this data. So this is a brief discussion that uh, how we can make a series stationary and uh, there are different tests and I compared the results of three different tests here that is the augmented decay flow test, the Phillips Peron test and the KPSS test. So I hope this is quite helpful and uh, uh, I will also show how we can uh, do this using eViews. So I will uh, open my data file and uh, my data file is uh, here and it's very simple. Uh, here is my data. Uh, so I was using this. So first of all, I will, uh, will open this and by clicking view, I can check the graph and uh, here is the graph and then I can view the unit root and uh, here by default it is augmented decay flow test. So first I will check uh, the augmented decay flow test at level using the intercept. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Similarly, I can check it uh, for uh, the trend in intercept at level, and uh, the result is exact. Uh, um, the result is opposite here. Uh, when we can uh, include both the constant and the linear trend, uh, then we reject the null hypothesis, and uh, now CPI. Uh, doesn't have a unit root. root. Uh, I can also check this uh, for the first difference with the intercept and uh, now based on this p-value we reject this uh, null hypothesis uh, that uh, the CPI series has a unit root. So when you take the first difference our uh, CPI series becomes stationary. Similarly I can also check this for uh, both the trend and intercept at the first difference and uh, again this p value is 0.00, .00 so we 
reject the incisional hypothesis and the CPI uh, series at uh, first difference does not have the unit root. Now, this is about augmented decay fluid test. I can also do the same for the Phillips Ferrand test and now I will change it here and instead of ADF, I will click on this and uh, I will click level and uh, first the, at the intercept and again the p value is 1. So, we fail to reject the null hypothesis of no unit root uh, of a unit root. So, here again I will check for trend and intercept and uh, this time again when we include both constant and linear trend then we reject the null hypothesis and uh, the CPI uh, does not have a unit root. So, um, I can do this for the first difference first for the intercept and uh, now the p value is 0, 0.00. So, we reject this null hypothesis and we conclude that uh, uh, CPI at first difference does not have a unit roost. Uh, similarly, I can also repeat this for uh, the trend and intercept uh, for the first difference of the CPI and again the p value is 0, 0.00. So, we reject this null hypothesis. Now, I will switch over to KPSS and uh, now I will change it here and uh, level and uh, trend and intercept. Uh, since this uh, value, but here the null hypothesis is that CPI is stationary and uh, since this value is greater than this, so uh, we reject this and uh, we include, we conclude that the CPI is not stationary. Now, I will check this for uh, the first difference and both I will include trend and intercept and uh, again here these are the uh, results and uh, I can also check the uh, uh, graph of this if I go back to my data mm, this is my data here is my data now let me uh, create a series a series Sorry, it's not uh, working. But anyway, I can generate a series, and a series is DCPI. That is first difference of the CPI, and that is equal to CPI minus CPI with leg. And uh, now the series will be created, and it is here. If I check the graph of this, this is CPI at uh, first difference. So uh, let me see how I can make this graph and exactly if you see at this graph now this graph is stationary around the zero uh, average value so when i uh, took the first difference the series became stationary and uh, when i use the series at uh, level at that time the data has uh, an upward trend in its graph so we can compare these both graphs this data is not stationary at level, but this data is stationary at level. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this was uh, helpful and informative for you. If you haven't yet uh, subscribed to the channel, kindly do subscribe and do not forget to click on the bell icon. I thank you very much uh, to you for watching this video. I'll uh, see you in another video. Thank you.